Welcome back to Life in the North 40 with Rick. I'm excited today to go into some methodology for your survival preparedness. And this is specifically focused towards preparing your survival kits. Bug out bags, uh, mini survival tin that I do, car preparedness kits, uh, to allow you to create your own kit and make sure you don't miss anything. So those 10 C's of survival preparedness are the five C's of survivability, cutting, combustion, cover, container, and cordage. And then the five C's of sustainability, which are cotton material, compass, candling or a loom, cargo tape, and canvas needle. Today, in episode one, we're going to go into detail in covering the five C's of survivability. And then in episode two, we'll cover the five C's of sustainability. And I'm going to give specific examples and ideas for each category. A couple things to go over before we get into the 10 C's for survival preparedness. An acronym that we used to use in the military called METTC. M for mission, E for enemy, T for train and weather, T for troops and support available, T for time available, and then C for civil considerations. The reason I bring that acronym up is because I use it for a lot of things still, and it's highly effective. It's a good way to analyze and prepare your kit. What is the mission that your kit is gonna be utilized for? Is it gonna be a mini survival tent, a car preparedness kit, a bug out bag, a medium sized kit, a kit on a watercraft? Are you gonna be in mountainous terrain, desert, woodland uh, type terrain? So what is the mission? That'll help you drive and build your kit. The other one to keep in mind for your kit specifically is terrain and weather. What type of terrain? Kind of already mentioned some of those different environments you may be operating in. That's going to drive what you use and how you pack your kit. Just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, with that being said, let's get into some specific examples of the five C's of survivability. Now that I've explained to you the 10 C's for survival preparedness, I wanted to discuss some things that I've commonly used in a lot of my kits, uh, varying cutting options. Some you may have thought of, some you may have not considered. So I want to start with something that pretty much everybody already probably is aware of and is going to want in a, a larger bug out bag or a larger kit, hunting bag, etc. Uh, this is a great, great survival knife called Mora for short, Swedish made, Marachnev, uh, stainless steel, full tang, drop point blade. Uh, really good quality survival knife. Full tang meaning that that steel runs all the way through in continuity, perpetuity all the way through that handle to the other side. And you can see that end there. What that means is if I have a round of wood here, I don't have a hatchet, I could get that blade in that end of that wood and just pound it from the top with a rock or whatever and drive that blade right through it. So full tang knife for a survival knife is a must have. I think this is a five inch. That's a good size. If you're gonna throw one knife in, you want it to be a full tang solid steel, stainless steel blade if possible or carbon steel. Another item to consider um, in a bigger kit, and this is one of the things I have in my car preparedness kit, is good old hatchet. This is a fairly inexpensive hatchet, $7.99 at Harbor Freight, seven and a quarter pound, but just a great item to have in a larger kit because uh, you have a hammer end on one end and then you have the blade on the other end, it still has the protector on it. Perfect, not very packable though, um, very lightweight overall. So that's a great item to have. And this is, like I said, in my car preparedness kit. And uh, this one came out of my wife's bug out bag. Um, she's got a little bit larger bug out bag. Another thing is a folding saw. This is an inexpensive folding saw Ozark Trail from Walmart. So I think this is just at about 11 bucks. And this is a seven inch blade unfolded. I have the higher end versions of these uh, than the Walmart brand in my bug out bag. And this is also uh, an item that's in my car preparedness kit. So that's just another level of the cutting category. If you have room or the application, your needs are going to be more than likely you're going to be needing to cut some wood, some firewood limbs or whatever. This is a great item to have. Just another inexpensive example, because this is for one of my car preparedness kits too, is as this is a full tang uh, steel blade similar to the Marachnev, but this is an Ozark Trail, comes with paracord on the handle, a sheath, and a ferrocerium rod. This is around the $10 price point too. So 
not super high end, but it'll get the job done. And this is great for like the car preparedness kit or a starter uh, bug out bag. I wouldn't trust this though, as much as I would trust this knife. But again, this is over $30 for this knife and this is around 10 bucks. So just to give you an idea, you already are, are thinking when you're thinking of cutting of knives, typically. Let's talk some specialty items that, that can be for a compact tin uh, and answer the cutting category. This right here is a survival card. And inside this card, these things will, it's stainless steel, these can be broken out and utilized. You see, I've got some fish hooks here, some double, double hook fish hooks, some single hook, uh, two different sizes, single hook size fish hooks. Um, some awls for punching through leather, or doing repairs, or little spear points here. Um, you can fashion into the end of a split stick and lash them. A button replacement, a large tooth saw, fine tooth saw, and these are tweezers that you can come out, uh, pull out of here and, and pinch. You've got a spear point here, an arrowhead, lash, you can lash on a stick as well. And then you've got an actual knife uh, you can pull out of here with a sharp edge on it. It is sharp. And that right there is one of the items I like to put into my uh, survival tins, my mini tins. Very small, thin, and uh, work great. So that is one of the types that I've used different brands. Uh, this one I got off Amazon um, in a three-pack. Not as expensive as, say, this one. The Tiny Survival Company, tiny, they, they make the Tiny Survival card. I took the magnet off the other side. This comes with two magnets. I guess with the intention of you could pull the items out, put it back and keep it stored, uh, sandwiched in between the two magnets. I don't like to put those in the, my kits though, just because it makes them thicker for when sp space is a premium in my tins. But similar deal, you got a, your uh, arrowhead, spear point, you've got a knife, some awls, fish hooks. This is almost, this is identical to the other one, just more compact. Um, and these are more expensive because of the, the brand name. Another type, uh, and those are all answer the cutting category because they have the saws um, and the knives. Uh, this one's more of a fishing focused survival card. Um, it's got a saw here, bigger saw here, um, uh, the bigger teeth here and the, the finer teeth. And it's got a rounded saw edge here for cutting. But you see, I've got a gig point. Uh, you could lash into a stick for gigging frogs or fish. Uh, another arrowhead spear point, spear point here and here, uh, one-sided, and more fish hooks. These are flashers. Uh, you run your fishing line through them, and these will flop and cause flash to attract fish. So that's why it's a fishing focus card. But again, it does have the cutting aspects. Just some food for thought for you for some examples you may have not considered. And what else? Um, we all know about your your uh, Leatherman's tool. This is a high-end Leatherman, the free P4. The reason I like this one is if you, uh, I'm right-handed, if you injure one hand, this can be flipped open with one hand and operated with one hand. And uh, it's got the pliers and stuff, but this isn't a review for this tool. I won't go through everything, but it's got multiple cutting options in here. I do like this one for, this is out of my bug out bag because of all the applications it has. Uh, and it can be operated with one hand uh, in the event you're disabled, one hand's down. One of the uh, smaller versions I like to use, obviously this is a cutting tool, but it's got multiple options. The reason I love this particular small keychain size uh, Leatherman is it has pliers versus just scissors. And the inner channel is wire cutters, but it's got a knife blade um, for cutting, and this has a wood and metal file uh, and that's to me a huge deal especially in my mini kits you can use that file um, to and it's on this side sharpen some of the small little items for tools or fashion them into tools uh, like paper clips and so on by filing them down to a point uh, so that file is invaluable not just for wood but for metal as well so another cutting option in a very compact package here's something that's kind of cool very unique as far as the cutting category and this one's for e and e purposes um, this is kind of a special order item you see it's a ceramic folding razor knife i've got a normal razor knife here these are back in my military days these are sometimes would be in the uh, individual first aid kits the ifax um, very sharp cut my finger wide open with one of these 
um, just a long razor blade uh, knife inside a container, a folded container. So these are very handy. I put these in a lot of my kits. Very sharp and very compact. This is a similar design, but it's ceramic. So that means you can get through metal detectors with it if you ever had the need to do so. So this one here is very sharp, but it is ceramic. Um, overall, probably not as durable, won't have the longevity that the other one would have, but again, no metal, metal or ferrous signature on that, and it's very small. So that, that's great for an uh, E&E type of a focus kit. Some of these smaller cutting options, you're gonna be forced to use in your survival tin smaller size. And always in all my survival small tins, I use a steel razor blade. Um, very compact, very utility. We've all seen those before, so. Um, Another item in some of the more elite kits, uh, especially the E&E &E kit that I do, um, this is a rod saw, and this has, some, some have their diamond uh, coated, or this one is um, made of tungsten carbide. So that is very compact, very small. You could <laughs> file through prison bars with that, um, slowly and meticulously or methodically, but that is a great item, kind of a special order deal again, in my Elite E&E &E kit. Um, so very packable. Cool item that I've researched and discovered is, I've seen the other, some folding scissors. My Growing up, my mom was big into crafts and sewing and all that kind of thing. She had those, kind of those wing style folding scissors. Um, but trying to find a very compact set for very small kits, like those survival tins, those are a little bulkier and fatter where this type of a folding scissor is very uh, flat and these just unfold and they have a very long cutting surface and very, very a nice tip to them and I've used these and they work great so that's a great folding scissor for your IFAC individual first aid kit your bug out bag uh, survival tins I put these in my elite uh, E&E tin Kind of redundancy this leatherman squirt does have scissors as well so you don't need these but that's why that kit's elite it's got all the good stuff boy they are sharp and I, they do a detailed scissor job so those kind of fold up like that and look at that they are very nice shape and tree is the brand of those scissors and this is a, another item that you may not consider in the cutting category this could be in comfort special equipment or hygiene. But I'll tell you what, one of the things I might, from spending a lot of time in the woods, in the military, and you know, hunting and doing survival stuff, getting your fingernails get too long, it just bugs me. And you know what, they can get split, you get a lot of junk under them, keeping your nails fairly trimmed is just helpful. And these are a product I discovered because of the, how thin they are. Yeah, there's a lot of small uh, nail clippers out there, but they just don't get as small and have such a, a skinny footprint as these. Um, and these babies really work well. Uh, I got a little release lever here and then they're spring loaded and they open up. And uh, there's your clipper right there. And then on the back, there's a nail file. So those things get very small, very compact. You can take the bigger ring off, make them more packable and still keep the smaller ring. But this is by, these are by Monkeys. A little more of an expensive single item. I think these are $7.99 for one. So, um, but I'll tell you what, having a nice pair of fingernail clippers is key. So there's a whole bunch of cutting options for you to consider. Now I'd like to get into some combustion. We want something to start a fire that's the quickest and easiest as possible, right? And the first option typically is gonna be the good old fashioned Bic lighter, right? Um, you know, why go to uh, flint and steel <laughs> when, when you could use a Bic lighter first? Uh, here I've got the mini and the full size uh, Bics. Obviously the full size is gonna give you more lights, more total fuel volume, but space uh, is obviously a driving factor a lot of times. If you have not watched my video on how to prep a Bic lighter for your survival preparedness, please watch that. Uh, it's a great video, very uh, poignant, and it shows you some things you may not have considered to uh, help the serviceability of your Bic lighter, uh, give it better life, actually tie some tinder in to the actual lighter, 
right on it. So that's a great video. So obviously combustion uh, fire starter, just a good old fashioned lighter, right? So Bic lighters. Then you've got, you know, a ton of, a, just a slew of different types of weatherproof, waterproof matches. Some are a lot more high end than others. This is just, you know, your basic waterproof matches from Coleman. They're just, got, they have a coated head. One of the things that I miss is um, a lot of these matches, you have to have the actual striker box or the striker surface that comes with it to light them. They're not the strike anywhere like what we remember when we were little kids, right? These are a good inexpensive waterproof match. I put these in my car preparedness kit for combustion and they work fine. A little bit higher speed or higher end, more expensive. This comes with its own case a lot of times is the Yuko Stormproof Matches. Now these are a whole different level uh, than those Coleman matches, all right? You can see that the uh, burning surface material is a lot bigger. Um, and these babies, when they light, they light strong and very hard to blow out. It comes with a little tinder in the actual storage container itself, a little cotton fiber. But you can see those matches compared to the Coleman, right? You just got a lot of material, a lot better fuel on those matches. And those, but those are more expensive, but they are very nice to have. And they're a little bit, you could break them down into a smaller amount. But again, you have to have the strikers. They come with it. They come with their own strikers inside the container, something to consider. But those are great to have in a bug out bag. And that, that striker is replaceable with the bag that you saw inside of here on the outside of the container. I'm gonna do a video and show you how I make these, but I call this the super match, it's a homemade Basically, this thing operates almost like a torch. And you take Yuko Storm Proof or Storm uh, Matches and bundle them together, wrap a makeup pad around those, two of those, and then dip that in Gulf Wax or Paraffin Wax. And uh, I got painter's tape around the striking head surfaces to keep those clean, but the rest is just encased in wax. So this thing, when, it, when you get it lit, it's just throwing a solid flame out very hot, very direct, and you know, with the wax, it's just very hard to put out. So that's great for wet weather and inclement weather scenarios. And I just wrap it in saran wrap too, just to further seal it. And so the wax doesn't rub off and break off in a kit. Another item is this stuff's not super packable. A lot of you have heard of fat wood, very uh, lightable pine wood. And so this stuff is a great fire starter lights up very good, takes off nice. It lights so good, could be almost tinder. You could shave it down and make it a little smaller. This is something I definitely, I put a couple sticks in my bug out bag because I have room for it. I could probably break this down or shave this down, cut it into some smaller chunks too, and make it a little more packable. Also by Yuko, um, Sweet Fire. It's a fire starter, strikable fire starter. They've got the match striker material on the tip here. You light it and uh, then it really burns through. This is kind of a wood uh, or a paper-based pressed material. It ignites really well. You know, kind of reminds me of my homemade fire starters. If you haven't seen that video, check it out with three simple household items that you normally throw away, actually. But these are, these are really great, and they pack fairly small. Come in a box of 20, individually wrapped. You see, I pulled the one out to show you. So I have put those in some kits in the past as well. So we just showed some things that actually light themselves um, they create combustion fire in themselves let's look at some items to light maybe some tinder with this is something that you know for the price it's it's very durable and very small and packable um, it's basically just the portion of the lighter that you see on on the lighter without the fuel source it's just a spark wheel so it's brass it's got a spring in here and it's got several flints that push up towards the top and then you've got the uh, striker wheel or spark wheel. And so you just do that right into your tinder, right? And get those sparks to catch in your tinder, blow on it, and that should ignite. So this thing is pretty handy. Um, I have used these in some small kits, um, but for the price, they're, they're a little more spendy just for the item itself. It's kind of like, okay, well, if I'm gonna throw this in, why don't I just throw a Bic lighter in? But this does pack quite a bit smaller even than the mini Bic. Let's take a look at those two side by side. So you, that is very small with no fuel source, but it's a great way to ignite. And it's durable to ignite some tinder. You see I've got a couple loose flints here that comes with extra flint. And that is by 
a UST form of tinder, kind of a pre-packaged wet fire tinder. These are kind of nice to have in some of my smaller kits. They pack very small and you squeeze them down. But basically this is just treated material that you can get that will light very easily even in inclement wet weather. Nice to have. You know, you can make a poor man's version of this by taking a cotton ball and saturating it with petroleum jelly or Vaseline. And obviously that's a mess. You got to put it in a little Ziploc um, to keep that containerized. But that wet fire is great. Let me show you another form of tinder. It's very small and packable. Um, these are basically just cotton fiber that's just compressed. It's compressed fiber and then stitched together. You can cut these little strands and uh, fluff this out and get that like that spark wheel on here. It will catch in here and blow on it and it will light. But these are called Tinder Quick. And uh, these I have are made by, where did I get this? I got it in a 50 uh, quantity. Um, so survival supply, I got these, you know, Tinder quick is a brand as well, but these are, these are great to have. These are very packable, small, compact, and you don't need to use the whole thing. You can unfray a portion of it. I put these in my mini, mini E and E survival tins or a lot of my mini tins cause they fit really nicely. And we've all seen these, you know, when, when I was a kid, I had one of these in my hunting pack. These are very inexpensive at Harbor Freight. The silver block here is a magnesium block, a mag block. And then embedded on the flank on the edge here is a ferrocerium rod, a ferro rod. And it comes with a striker and a little saw on one side. You could actually saw into and cut that magnesium, shave it into a pile, and then just direct your spark right at it. I've got a ferro rod that I was messing with, a little easier, bigger, just to give you a demo. This is a ferro mag rod combo as well with the handle. This came with um, a knife from Walmart, but uh, same concept. You've got your magnesium. It's got a coating on it that's black. You shave off your magnesium. Let's see if I can get the sparks going on that. Let's see that? So when I get a nice pile of that magnesium, those sparks will take it right off. I don't want to do that on my, my wife's craft table here. She'll be mad at me. So. Those ferro rods, you know, that's what they'll do is create the spark for you. You just need some steel, hardened steel, like the 90 degree edge of the back of your survival knife or whatever works great. If you don't have a tool supplied like this ferro block that comes from Harbor Freight. Um, so those are some examples of some other ways to get some tinder lit. Here's some individual little ferro rods that I buy in bulk, put in my smaller kits. Um, you can put a lanyard on there, some paracord, and you've just got the ferro rod by itself without magnesium. And that's a lot of quantity of ferrocerium that's going to last you quite a while. Um, you just need a good striker to uh, generate the spark off of that. A Fresnel lens. This is great. This is another way to get combustion utilizing solar uh, radiation or the solar rays, you know, that get magnified. We uh, used to burn ants with magnifying glasses, the same concept. You can just direct the sun's rays. This also comes with um, a ruler on each side, centimeters on one side, inches on the other. Uh, I recommend you keep it in its protective case because it is flimsy plastic. And you put these like I do and some of my small tins, survival tins, you don't want that to get scratched up. So you'll see in my one video, I use this as a buffer or a wraparound for my cargo tape or my Gorilla Tape in my kit uh, so I can get it off. So that's a good little package deal. A couple other things I like to throw into the smaller kits too is the Magic Relighting Birthday Candles. Fairly inexpensive at Walmart. I think this was 90 cents for 12 pieces. Um, you know, these are very flammable, the wax and all that, plus they stay lit. Uh, good thing to throw in a survival tin. Very compact, very inexpensive. This is a Yuko beeswax candle, 12 hour candle. Uh, a little more expensive than the normal wax candles that are just paraffin or whatever. Why? Because the beeswax has a longer burn time. But uh, this is obviously a combustion item. This could get lit, stay lit and be something I can use to light other things. Um, plus, it provides some illumination, some comfort. In a shelter, this can raise your temperature up to 20 degrees. Um, so that's a great item to have. I put this in my grab-and-go survival kit, uh, bug-out bags, uh, hunting packs, stuff like that. So this right here um, is a great item. 12-hour burn time 
on that. These also fit in candle lanterns. So this is just a great, great item to have if you can fit it. Again, size is the driving factor of where you can use this. What type of a kit? A little bigger kit, like a bug out bag or whatever. Um, these are a great thing to have. I call them heat tabs from my army days. Uh, we had army issue heat tabs, it came in a foil container, very similar to these. They were smaller, but these are great to have. They're fuel tabs. You can cook with them, basically. You know, you over the old canteen, a canteen cup over this. Um, and uh, or, you know, you can get a fire going and keep it going with these. So these things burn really hot. Uh, this thing kicks off a blue flame. But again, can't fit this in every kit. So and that's those are Esbit fuel tabs. All right, guys, gals, that's some ideas for combustion. And uh, next, we're going to talk cover. Now, cover is one of those that you really need some space to accomplish the cover category in a kit. Obviously, in a mini survival tin, you're just not going to really be able to get something in there for actual cover. So it's more than likely it's going to be your bug out bag, your hunting pack. Um, maybe a preparedness box in your vehicle, something of that nature, like my car preparedness kit. So some of the, the options that I, I use and have for cover um, in some of my different kits are the good old fashioned poncho liner, which is unbelievably warm for its size. This is just an ACU pattern, digital camo pattern with uh, six uh, army style uh, bungee cords those are not they're very long and stretchy so that that's actually out of my wife's bug out bag all the bungee cords are wrapped around it makes it nice it's compact fits in the bottom of her bug out bag really nice one of the things i want you to think about when you're thinking of cover um, you need to remember you need something to sleep on sleep under and sleep in so some sort of a protective cover over the top of you to keep the elements off. Something to sleep inside of and then sleep on, right? Some insulative layer between you and the ground, preferably. Again, you could have all kinds of luxury items, but how much space is it going to take, right? If you want something in a compact bug out bag, you need to make some sacrifices. But this poncho and bungees is something to sleep in, and the bungees is a form of cordage. To, to do something to sleep under, like the old army poncho, right? And these come in all kinds of camo patterns. I got a couple of ranger bands securing this now, uh, fairly packed pretty tight, uh, the air squeezed out of it, but this is waterproof. So you can make a trapezoidal uh, tent uh, or covering, stretch it out with your bungees. So there's something to sleep under and then that poncho liner is obviously something to sleep in. Now, what about sleep on? If you have, you know, you can, this stuff can get expensive, but it's about what you, what you have the budget for and what you have the access to. But this right here is the camouflage Gore-Tex liner bivy sack for the Gore-Tex sleeping bag. So this right here, you get inside, so you're sleeping on this, which is waterproof and breathable. You get in it with your poncho liner, wrap up in that, and then you have, say, your poncho stretched over the top with your bungee cords. So that's that's a good way to go. Now, you may not have all that sexy stuff, but nothing beats the good old-fashioned tarp. This is uh, the common items I put in my car preparedness kit. I like to go a little bigger than this. This just happens to be a 6x8. Uh, this is nice and thick, though. This is a heavy-duty 10 mil tarp. So it's, you, could, you could use this to drag stuff and do a pretty good job. Uh, wild game if you got that down in a survival situation. Uh, you could use this as a drop. You could lay on this as a drop cloth between you and the ground. But I would use this over the top of me with your bungee cords. So these are some inexpensive bungee cords from Harbor Freight, different, different sizes uh, that you can go ahead and stretch that out for cover over the top of you. You could, you could get that to pack pretty small too, that, that tarp in itself. This is a, a more costly item, but high end. Um, this is an SF Special Forces bivy sack by Snug Pack. This is in my bug out bag. So answer in the mail on, because my bug out bag is a gray man bug out bag. It's, it packs very small. It does not look tactical at all. Um, but this is something to sleep on. You literally get inside of this. It's not going to give me a lot of padding it's not like I have a 
a sleep pad under me or whatever, but it gives me a layer between me and the ground. It's breathable and waterproof and very compact. So I can literally get in that, and here's my poncho liner with bungees to sleep in. And this actually can take the place of something to sleep under as well for a compact setup. I have something to sleep in that's protective and sleep on. Um, actually, I'd be wrapped up in this poncho liner for the insulative layer inside of this bivy, which is a layer between the ground and I, so I'm sleeping on it and I'm technically zipped into it. And then this is, if it rains on me, yeah, not optimal. This is Gore-Tex, it's waterproof and breathable, but uh, it's gonna give me that layer uh, for something very packable in the event you don't have a poncho on top of this. But one of the things I do have in my bug out bag that's also very compact, you may not have thought about, good old trash bag. This right here is three mils thick. It's a contractor, hefty contractor trash bag, a 42 gallon. This stuff is pretty nice, very thick plastic. Um, yeah, it'll tear but it's not gonna tear like a normal trash bag. This could be a ground cloth. This could be a covering over the top of you as well. Um, this is also flammable for tinder too. This plastic kind of smokes, but um, something else that's very packable and you can get into a nice kit. There's a lot of other things you could use for cover too. These are just kind of things that I've focused in my, my bags and kits that are able to be packed fairly small and that are fairly efficient. But again, if you have some huge tough box that you're gonna create a kit in, you can go with bigger items. You can have the inflatable mattresses and stuff like that, but that's more of a camping deal. This is more of a survivability, a survival uh, kit type of a setup that I'm looking at. Oh, one more thing on cover. Uh, the old, I used to call space blankets, these emergency thermal blankets, these things pack very small and uh, they have a great thermal return or reflectability. They're, you, you can use them for signaling, you can use these for a ground cloth. They do tear pretty easily, they're pretty thin. Some have a, a better mill thickness than others. This is a good one here, I think, for the price. 52 inches by 82 inches unfolded. I do put these in my grab and go medium sized survival kits. Um, not in the mini survival tins, it just takes too much space. But this is another great cover option. You can wrap up in it, you can lay on it. You could even put this over the top of you. And these do come a lot of times in a lot of different colors. I like just silver. Uh, because of the reflectability of it. Typically there's a color on one side, silver on the other, but this is just a silver on both. So this is a great uh, item for cover as well that's very compact. Next we're going to go ahead and hit container. Our fourth C of survivability, which is container, specifically focus on containers for my preparedness kits and tins primarily. Obviously the container is going to be size driven based off of packability and what you're gonna where you're gonna need it and store it. The optimal container is one that not only stores your kit, but when you empty it out could be used to cook in or to uh, prepare food in or it's multi-purpose. If they can be watertight or waterproof, that's great as well. That's tough to do, especially in some of these mini survival tin sizes. A couple of these, I'll start with these two metal tins here. It's preferred to have one with a flip lid that's attached. Obviously, why? So you don't lose your lid under duress or whatever. And so metal allows you to be able to cook in right into the coals of a fire. So this is a pretty good size one. This is bigger than an Altoid size tin. It's kind of deep. The, the tin that's, this is for my basic tin, fits great in here. This one here though is actually the ideal size for my Elite e, &E mini tin. Uh, it just holds a little bit more stuff. You can see that it's a little bit bigger uh, than that other tin. And actually the dimensions on this, this one's four and a half by three and a 3.3 and then it's 0.9 inches thick. So this one here is a pretty good size. Uh, you can get quite a bit in here. Uh, it is metal. Um, these are not waterproof or watertight, uh, but they're very handy. You can fit these in your cargo pocket, the body armor, in your body armor pouch pocket on the front. Very packable. So there's a couple examples of some metal tins that I use for my survival tins, mini tins. I bought this too. This is kind of cool. This is actually a lunchbox. Um, 
I don't, I wouldn't say it's an Asian lunch box, but it's kind of a bento box, that kind of a style. It's kind of cool. I haven't done a kit with it yet, but it's got clippable, lockable lids, and it does have an inner seal, which is nice. So it seals pretty good. You see it's got that rubber seal on the inside, and this is a pretty good size. It's I got a pressure release valve for air pressure. Um, gets too much buildup, it'll release. And so that's kind of cool, but it's still sealed shut. And this is pretty good, good and deep, right? So you can see that, and I believe this is stainless steel too. So this is this is kind of more spendy, um, but great size. And you can definitely cook in this. Um, boil water, do soup, whatever. Uh, food procurement, get it in here, throw some water in here, cook it right in the fire. You can get, you could do a pretty good kit in this this metal tin as well. And I do like that it's sealable. I have not, like I said, built a kit in this yet. I like how those clips shut. So those are some examples of metal options. There's a lot of them out there. You can reuse some of your old Tupperware and stuff like that for basic kits, but I do like sealable. What I have here is uh, a Plano 3400 series box. A lot of these guys use these for fish and tackle and stuff. And this has a rubber seal and seals tight. You know, if you really submerge this, it'll eventually leak. But this thing, if you dump it in the water, it's going to float and hold the water out, which is nice. I do my grab-and-go survival kits in this. That's a good medium size, not too big. You see it's bigger than that mini tin quite a bit. And it does seal. It's got those clip handles on three sides and a nice seal on the inside that locks that into position. So that's pretty nice, pretty slick. And again, you can get quite a bit of stuff in here. Um, my video on, check out my video on my grab and go survival kit. And you'll see all the stuff I can get in here. And check and see how many of the C's I can hit too um, on that kit in this particular container. So just I'm, just, I'm just trying to give you a couple options for containers. There's a lot of them out there. Just trying to get your juices flowing and food for thought. You may see that I have an unlubricated condom here. What that's out for is this is a great item in a very small compact kit actually for <laughs> storing water and filling with water. These condoms are very, very strong for their size. You want unlubricated for obvious reasons. You don't want lubrication on your, your container. But uh, it allows you to have a very compact, packable, small container that you could put water in and transport water from say a stream to your campsite or your survival site, whatever. Uh, these things do break. I mean, it's not it's not perfect. It's just a small container that's very packable. And yeah, I've got some various Ziploc bags that uh, special sizes that I keep on hand, not just your normal Ziploc quarts or gallons or freezer bags. These are some very small Ziplocs that I use for my kits to package meds, individual meds or individual items and squeeze them down. I've got quite a few different size Ziploc bags. Those are all forms of container and they do hold water um, or they could hold some basic food items, berries or whatever. And then these are really nice. And these are a little more of a specialty item. These are water storage bags and pot potable water storage bags by Whirlpack. See, I got a, several of them here. And these are very nice because they pack very small. You'll see in uh, one of my videos on my uh, Elite e and &E survival tin. I actually have one of these that I prep and get very small and is in that kit. And this does answer that container category um, in a very small compact scenario for water storage. And this one too is cool when you fill it with water, it does stand up on its own. It'll fill up and it'll be freestanding. You see it is sealable. You've got a zip tie and some sealable deals at the top. You can roll down and clip it and seal it shut. And then you've got a perforated tear off that you can use. You can also mark on this with your, your Sharpie, uh, put a date time group or whatever on that. Maybe you, you put some water purification tablets and it takes a few hours. You can put the time it started, whatever. But these are really nice. And I'm trying to remember, I believe, what was the what was the size of these? I want to say these are 32 ounces. I'm sorry, these are actually 36 ounces. So that's pretty cool. So those are a really cool uh, container item. 
So those are some, some examples of container, specifically with a uh, preparedness kit or survival kit focus. Uh, C, the final C of survivability, which is cordage. A little bit bigger container is this snappable small container by Iris. This is what I use for my car preparedness kit. I get these at a four pack, in a four pack at Costco and they're pretty cost effective. You can get quite a bit in these. Great size for a car, not too big, sealable, and perfect to get those, those items for my car preparedness kit in. This is a actual 12.9 quarts, and it's got the buckle type lid. It's six and a half uh, inches long by 10 and a half wide by six and a half deep. Nice container for, like I said, my car preparedness kit. Wanted to continue with some more containers that I thought you'd be interested in. And actually, everything you see here in front of me came out of my wife and my bug out bags. Um, and they are 72 hour bug out bags, but I realized as far as my container coverage, I haven't shown you a couple other cooking items uh, for a larger like bug out style kits. I wanted to show you a water purification bottle uh, by Life Straw. And the reason this is a good item to have is it allows you to containerize the water and filter it in the same container. Um, some people ask me, hey Rick, um, what do you think of those life straws? Just the actual life straw? Uh, the reason, they're super compact, so that's an advantage and they are usable for an emergency. The problem I have with just the, just the basic life straw is you don't have a container. If you're gonna procure water with that, you literally have to lean over a stream or a creek or a pond or a lake or a river or a body of water and drink and, and lay down and suck the water through the straw. Now that's okay for something ultra compact for like an E&E &E &E kit, but long term, I do not want to be able to have to stop and stay static and lean over a body of water and drink out of it. I want to be able to containerize my water, continue to move, maybe I'm escaping or evading, I don't want to stop and have to drink water sitting still. I want to be able to purify, get a water container full of water like this, and then be able to drink on the move, which this affords me the opportunity to do. So I hope that answers your question why I don't prefer just the life straw by itself. Um, especially for like a bug out bag or something. I want to be able to get my water in a container and, st and drink it on the go, on the run, on the move. And so this allows me to fill the bottle with water and it's got the filtration wand inside and I literally can drink the water through this and it's going to be purified. So I like that option. Um, and I like that concept. So that's why I wanted to show you that. And this is a form of a water storage container in itself uh, and a water filtration system. Okay, another water storage container. If you have a base camp and you have, or a campsite or a, a hide position, this is a great item. It's by Platypus. I've used this for years, backpacking or hiking with my water pump, actually. This allows you to pump the water right into this bag or just fill this bag with water and it'll hold two liters of plus of water and you can literally take and carry this back to your campsite. You can actually boil the water inside this plastic bag. This is a very durable plastic. You can't put it in the fire, it'll melt, but inside a pot uh, with other water, you could boil it inside the bag or you could just dump your water on site into your container, boil it there. So this is just another good storage option. All right, so what I have here is I have two container slash cooking kits from each of our bug out bags. And I'll start with Brittany's bug out bag option here. I guess this is hers. Um, what I have here is I have a stove from Pathfinder, um, the canteenshop.com. Um, the Pathfinder store is where I got this. This is very cool because it nests with the Stanley Cook Kit, um, which is very inexpensive. It's like, we remember the old mess kit days. This is kind of like a mess kit, except for it's, uh, it's just a bigger uh, cylindrical style container, which is very usable. So I got the Stanley Kit in my wife's bug out bag, which allows you, it has a lid, a vented lid, you can pour 
through those holes um, in steep or whatever and you can hold that lid on and then it's got another vent hole here so you see that's the Stanley uh, the Stanley cook kit and I can't remember what this was I think it's like $17 or something it was a great buy so it has its own lid I kept these in you could take them out for weight it's got a couple plastic cups it has a measuring line in there but I don't see its mark the size let's see if it says on the bottom 10 ounces so two 10 ounce cups you could take those out if you don't care for them I just left them in there and then you've got the actual uh, cooking pot or container itself which is great you can literally put that in the fire in the coals or because I have this stove base which is akin to a canteen stove a canteen cup stove the great thing about this stainless steel is again those esbit tabs that I talked in under combustion that'll have an effective cooking time of 12 minutes per tab and they get up to 1400 degrees and they burn clean and hot you place a heat tab put this on a rock or a nice solid surface put you a heat tab under there and then just set your container right on top so the good thing about that is it's got its own handle folding handle keep you from burning your hands you can use that to pour again you have a slotted section here maybe you have made tea out of uh, pine needles or whatever you can literally strain those out you can cook in here so this is just a great item very and great for the price very um, usable and utility this has also got graduated measurements uh, ounces and milliliters down the side so 25 26 ounces total uh, size so you could boil in that whatever and it's great nesting item with that Pathfinder stove you can also store something if you if you lost those cups you could also put other items in this to save space uh, which you'll see I've done in my uh, bug out bag uh, container cooking setup so there's that you see that if I line that tab lid up the lid pull when I compress this handle it'll fit right over that handle like that and lock into position here so great great cooking item by Stanley and a great pairing in very lightweight and utility uh, to cook over this Pathfinder stove from canteenshop.com is who makes these um, stainless steel works great with those heat taps all right so now you have my my cook in in container kit which is also stainless steel uh, got this container from the Pathfinder store uh, with a sealable lid so this is actually a water container a water storage container obviously this lid is plastic so you don't want to just lay that in the fire this way you could set that in the coals and it'll cook in this all day long you just got to watch that poly lid to save space in my bug out bag and mine's a gray man bug out bag so what I do is in this container now if I was to store water in here I obviously would have to take all these items out of here so what I do is I keep my water pump my water purification pump which is a Sawyer mini inside that container Again, I've got those catered in uh, water purification tabs. These are basically chlorine tabs and there's two per packet. You want to let that sit, they say, for four hours to really to kill anything. But this uh, will purify. Let's see, one tablet will do for one liter of water. So you got two per. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten. I have ten of them in here, which is going to buy me some time. Obviously, the beauty of these is when you don't have a hole up site and a hide site and or a camp site, if you're on the move or on the run or Ian Ian, this allows you to drop these in your canteen, scoop water on the go, use that cotton material to pre-filter it if need be, but scoop the water into your container, throw one of these pills in there, one pill, and this is a liter size container. So that works perfect. This container, one pill. I didn't show you its container. It nests inside of. This is another perfect deal. So it's all uh, self-contained and then this is my cooking pot which you saw that will nest inside of it has its own handles so I can literally set that onto a fire um, or whatever I do not have the canteen cup style cooking stove base 
because I want to have a little more Spartan kit, a little lightweight kit, and I know that I can set or fashion a few rocks around my fire and set that on a little tripod of rocks, or I can set that right in the coals it, themselves. This also has a couple pre-drilled holes here on the sides. They have a pot grabber that you can use um, to, to grab this off of the coals, or you can actually, it'll hook through here, and you can make one out of a coat hanger really easily, and then you can have line above it um, and have a tripod and literally have this hanging over your fire uh, suspended um, and do it that way as well. You see that I also have a slotted lid uh, that goes with that Pathfinder kit. Stainless steel, got its own handle. You can strain. You got these holes here, uh, perforation holes that are drilled in a vent hole, and those can literally go in like that. You see that it has the slots that are cleared out for that pot hanger if you choose to hang this. So those things line up here and here. Uh, you use that pot hanger and though it's spring loaded and it just has two male portions that stick through the holes comes up to a point or an apex and you can literally hang it from a stick or a tripod or a limb above um, or just use it to get the uh, to grab the pot when it's super hot say it's in the coals or whatever so I wanted you to be able to see that lid I keep that in a separate pocket my bug out bag obviously since these nest together really well and they sit in my outer cup holder so Nice product, stainless steel, heavy duty, you can cook right in it. To clarify on this water filter again, this water filter comes with this bag. So basically you can fill this with your non-potable water, potable water, and then you see on the threaded end here, you'll screw that in, okay? And the direction of flow here and this Sawyer mini filter is going out that way and there's even a directional arrow here uh, on the upper fitting. So you fill that with water and you'll just squeeze this and force that water through the filter into your container of choice, right? Could be my water container I just showed you or uh, water bladder or whatever. So a good little system. If you don't use this squeeze option in this bag, you can use the plunger. It's just, you know, 50 milliliters of water. You can draw that water and then mate that together you got to hold it because it's not it doesn't screw on there and you can push the water through it that way if you wanted to you could slide the straw over that male end here and push it on just like that right and then you can go ahead and suck through the uh the clean end and draw the water that way but if i want to get it in my container um, i'm just going to use that bag and push it through until I get that one liter of water. And this is a 16 ounce bag. All right, so take me a couple couple uh, deals to fill my bag or my uh, water bottle. That's very compact. I, I had a sweet water or it was a different brand, the ceramic water pump filter that actually pumps, but it's substantially larger than this. And as you can see, all this fits right inside my Pathfinder stainless steel bottle. The reason I keep this is I have the room to store it in here because it's multi-purpose and I can use this to irrigate wounds as well. So I can draw water, I got a major cut or whatever, I can irrigate wounds. Out in the wild too, in a survival scenario, one of the things that's tough to do is deal with an eye wound or whatever. This is, allows you to do an eye flush, a wound flush. What, sell, what easy container kit for water storage, cooking, do you want to use? And these are two great ideas that are fairly cost-effective, inexpensive, and they're all-inclusive in, in a stainless steel kit. I do not want to mess with multiple dishes and so on. I want to be able to reuse these same items on the go. Comments below on uh, the bug out bags if you're interested, which I have a lot of information on those and a lot of great items on how I've built those using the 10 C's. Uh, if you're interested in the bug out bags, when I, when I showcase those, I'll explain the, uh, the backpacks um, and all the features that those have as far as a container as well. That final C of survivability, cordage, let's discuss that. We've got quite a few items here, as you can see. Got a lot of different options. You know, one of my favorites and common use cordage items, especially in the military, is uh, what we call 550 cord. Um, 
550 pound tensile strength paracord. It's got uh, the true 550 cord uh, government issue standard. It's got uh, the seven inner nylon strands and then it's got the outer nylon sheath. So stuff has a very small uh, packability factor. Uh, it rolls well and it's super strong for its size. So obviously in my bug out bag I have this and in my medium to larger size kits I have several several feet 30 feet of this at a minimum. So this paracord is really nice. Uh, an item that they've come out with that's an pretty sexy and an improvement over that is survivor cord and it takes that paracord concept instead of 550 pounds tensile strength this stuff has got a 700 pound tensile strength so the inner strands include some cool items it, it includes one of the strands is a small thin run of hemp line for fire starter for tinder it's also got some monofilament fishing line a strand of that throughout the entire run of this and it's also got a fine piece of uh, copper wire for traps and snares and conductivity as well if you needed to complete a circuit. Um, so it's got fire starter, fish in line, and wire amongst the other strands in here. So awesome. And it's got an increased tensile strength. This stuff is more expensive, but you could cut off runs of this and you have trap and snare line, fish in line, and a fire starter as well as cordage uh, within it. So that is a great multi-purpose, multi-faceted item. Well worth the cost in my opinion. I obviously put these in my high-end kits and my bug out bags. So that's very cool. This is bank line. This is really good. It's, it's a smaller diameter than your paracord and works better for lashing a lot of times. Um, and it's kind of coarse. And it really, it's braided and it really grabs itself and ties well. You can do nets and um, traps and snares with this as well, this bank line. And really good stuff. And it comes in multicolors. I have this in black. I can't remember the diameter that I have here. But that's a great cordage item. I throw the bungee cords in the cordage category. It, you know, it works like cordage. Um, obviously, these things can dry rot over time and they can lose their elasticity but bungee cords form a cordage this is a quick easy way like I talked earlier for our cover section to get a poncho up a tarp up and secure equipment so that's nice to have you see I've got some wire here and you know I'm gonna just throw it in the cordage category because um, you can lash with it make repairs this is old uh, military army issue trip wire steel trip wire some good stuff. You see, I've cleaned off one of the OD sections here for some of my kits, taking that off and rolling it smaller. So this stuff's really good. You can still get this at some Army uh, surplus stores and online. I do love that in my kits. In replacement of that, or to replace that, if you can't find it, this is, this is pretty good stuff. It's not quite as strong, um, and the diameter is a little bigger, but it's it's softer and easy to work with and it works great for like squirrel poles Different traps. It's floral wire and I think this is 14 gauge if I remember right 24 gauge actually 24 gauge so um, Good stuff Like I said traps snares you got conductivity for connecting a circuit repair of equipment just very handy. You can use that in place of the trip wire when you, for your wire needs in a kit. Also, see, I got some Ranger bands here. And I don't know if these are necessarily cordage. I just throw them in the cordage category. I get different sizes. Um, I always try to, I always throw one of these around the outside of my mini tins just to help keep the lid closed. Plus, you get the additional benefit of another securing item in your kit on the outside. And these are flammable. They make a good tinder. Uh, item so those are good to have ranger bands and you see here I have some just a roll of dental floss I took it out of the case and uh, This this is awesome because it fits in my mini tins. It's very compact and packable It is multi-purpose back in my army days sewing cat eyes on my ranger patrol cap We used to use dental floss. It's very strong. It's easy to work with and it, this is a uh, 55 yards on this roll of dental floss. It's waxed, so it will light right up. It's a good form of tinder. You can do your own sutures with it. Suture yourself up with it. You can secure 
and sew with it, just like I mentioned. Great cordage item that's very small. What I have here is, if, if you've seen my video on prepping your Bic lighter for your survival kits or your hunting pack or whatever, you'll see that I use this material here. Watch that video. It's pretty short. It's pretty interesting. This is hemp wick that's been coated with beeswax and for candle making. Nice and flammable, holds a flame well, and it's very pliable, easy to work with. Um, you could use this to secure or lash uh, with. It's really handy. And uh, this is on all my lighters. So I have a form of cordage and a fire starter or tinder with this wick as well. Then the good old zip ties. I got a couple different sizes here. Uh, depending on my kit size, I run different size zip ties. Obviously the bigger zip ties are more useful usable. They have a stronger tensile strength and they can wrap around more items. My mini tins, I might just get this size here that has like a 14 pound tensile strength to it, a little four inches or whatever in multi-colors. Uh, you know, these are all medium size and these right here are eight inch. I've got 11 inch and uh, bigger, but uh, these things come in handy. Um, you can run those on your tarp, uh, make a loop. You can do all kinds of stuff, repairs, um, you know, reinforce a zipper, whatever. So, you know, I throw it in the cordage category just for food for thought, and I definitely include zip ties in all my preparedness kits, bug out bags, etc. Now that we've completed the last C of the five C's of survivability cordage, we are now going to do the five C's of sustainability in part two. Make sure to check out that video next. Also, for any kits that you may be interested in to include my car preparedness kit, my Elite e, e Mini Survival Tin, my Woman's Preparedness Mini Survival Tin, my Urban Basic Survival Mini Tin, or my Grab and Go Medium Survival Kit, as well as my Gray Man Elite 72 Hour Bug Out Bag, or my Two Person 72 Hour Bug Out Bag, Please see in the description box below our contact information and send us an email for any kits you may be interested in and we can dialogue directly with you for purchase and getting one of those out to you. All right, everybody. Thanks for your time. See you in part two.